welcome uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, to CE podcast is a new initiative which has started uh, in each episode we shall try to deal with a topic related to CE and allied industry with respect to product projects people and future technologies in today's episode we are going to learn about a very interesting and new concept micro turbine powered genset Uh, which is going to disrupt uh, the distributed power generation industry very soon to talk about this subject we have a very seasoned uh, guest mr sanjay jain on this show mr jain is a mechanical engineer and has been serving mainly in the distributed energy business for over two decades along the way he has uh, worked in several leading organizations like greens jcb and now with gladon Uh, which is basically a british multinational company mr jain in his current role with bladen heads the india business operations the bladen uh, products uh, are the products which are going to offer clean power technology uh, which which is so important in the uh, current uh, times where we are talking about so much of sustainability and sustainable future welcome uh, mr jain to this uh, new podcast uh, series uh, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, from uh, from delhi today uh, give us in uh, a brief uh, about your own personal journey so far thank you thank you dr mishra uh, thanks for your invitation privileged to be here uh, i am basically a mechanical engineer graduated from government engineering college jabalpur and uh, since then i actually started my career as a sales engineer or well, initially for some period i was in mechanical power transmission products so after that come um, comprises of all kind of uh, mechanical power transmission product like you know gear boxes couplings uh, speed reducers and then i got a chance it, it, you can say it's a backward integration so i then switched to power generation i actually uh, was in a diesel engine business where generator was one of the main application of course we were serving other application also so their uh, journey of uh, i know uh, in distributed energy business started and i served grief scott limited for almost 12 years power product division of jcb for almost 7 8 years and then uh, blade on micro turbine for a short sting i was in jackson also which is a cummins oem so it is an interesting journey where importance of distributed energy business if you see a power deficit and then a quality of power uh, that actually makes it more interesting how it actually is contributing to any country's economic growth so that's about me great as you have spent over two decades uh, in the distributed uh, energy sector kindly take us through uh, what you get a sense of you uh, know the overall genset market uh, in india uh, in terms of size segment oems oes uh, uh, just to give an overview of business like in india yeah so diesel genset market is i mean uh, as a growing market it is one of the biggest market in 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 the world uh, after china and uh, mm-hmm. though power deficit is reduced <clears throat> but uh the importance of power back is is always there because of you know continued economic growth there is always uh, even if power is available quality of power is also always an issue uh, again there are a lot of factors power theft poor uh, transmission structure infrastructure and the power when it is actually required a quality power if it is not available then it affects so the diesel generator comes into picture so importance of power backup is always there will always be there despite you know reduced power deficit uh, in, in almost all the country developed countries and even developing uh, usa is also a classic example where hardly any power deficit but genset market is growing china india india i mean last 8 9 years this a, a, a big improvement in power deficit uh, i mean getting reduced but genset market is growing so where, that is where you can understand the importance of uh, power backup industry genset market in india is almost if it i talk about the organized it is almost 130000 uh, 
gensets are sold in a year. Uh, I'm talking about a power range around 7.5 kV to 2,500 kV, which is a normal range. And in terms of value, it is almost uh, to the tune of $1.3 billion, so which is quite big and, and growing every year. There was a setback uh, two, three, four years back when Telecom, which is one of the biggest customer, actually uh, the, the, I mean, substantial in terms of volume uh, got reduced. But overall, if <clears throat> I talk about genset market or in general non-telecom, it is always a growing market. And um, there are a lot of uh, developments happening in this sector. So power backup uh, with uh, continuous economic growth will always be growing for, I think, next I mean, 15, 20 years also, if I see in India banking. And uh, uh, out of this, uh, all these segments, I mean, uh, you mentioned about uh, telecom sector, for example. Uh, so uh, the infrastructure for telecom sector uh, will continue to grow, isn't it? I mean, uh, or do you see a stagnation at this uh, at some point of time? No. So as of now, it is it is going to grow. Uh, main reason is there is continued expansion of 4G, even in rural areas. And now uh, the 5G rollout has begun. So this is going to grow. So there's no doubt about it that, that uh, for for many years to come, it is continuously going to grow. Uh, I was just talking about the market and segment, uh, as you asked about OEAs or OEMs. This market is also I mean, interesting in terms, it is not sold uh, or made by engine manufacturers directly, but mainly there are some engine manufacturers directly involved, but this product is actually made and sold by the packages who are authorized by engine manufacturers. So the end product carries a co-branded product, I mean, or a logo. So it is, I mean, like all leading companies like Cummins, Kerloska, Mahindra, they have authorized original equipment assembler, what we call it. So they take engine from engine manufacturers and then make a complete generator, alternator, I mean, canopy, control panel, everything, this is packaged and then sold in the market. There are some OEMs, what we call it, again, the, they tie up with different engine manufacturers for different reach, but the ultimate or end product is, is a branded by their own companies, uh, like of Kohler, JCB, and there are other companies. So they are not attached with engine manufacturers as far as the end product is concerned, but for a different range, they tie up with the engine manufacturers. Okay, uh, so the the uh, two different strategies are basically with respect to uh, uh, trying to basically suit the uh, logistic part of it. I think uh, that could be one of the uh, major uh, challenge with respect to reaching out to the end customer, is it? Yeah, so that is why this OEA model actually works well because all engine leading engine manufacturers have OEAs spread across the nation because an end product a generator is to be transported from Jammu to Kanyakumari will be high cost. So that is why the OEA network actually spread across. I mean, so some manufacturers have three or some have five or seven OEAs spread in the different part of the country. So they get engine from one source and then they package it and serve their geography. So obviously the gensets uh, are using uh, uh, diesel uh, and of course petrol as well uh, as the basic input and are obviously uh, emitting the pollution into the air. So what kind of regulations are regulating these uh, emission norms in genset business? So uh, 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 genset actually have a different emission norms. Uh, if I talk about uh, automobiles or CEV. So they have different norms for different applications. So for the diesel generator, uh, the norms are called CPCB, stage two, which is currently in practice. It's called Central Pollution Control Board. So it is all controlled by uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest and CPCB is the nodal agency. Uh, this actually takes care of uh, the regulation in terms of carbon monoxide, unburnt hydrocarbons, and particulate matter, which affects the climate or environment. 
So the C, it was came into picture around 2005 when CPCB stage one was implemented and 2014, the CPCB stage two, which was, it was one of the stringent norm if I talk about, uh, you know, rest of the world also. And it got delayed. So now next year, that is this year, 2023, July onward, it is jumping to stage four plus. It will be called CPCB four plus. And uh, it will be much more stringent than even Euro stage five. So unburnt hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and particulate matter, particulate matter, which is currently is, the limit is 0.3, is going to be 0.03. I mean, reduction of almost 90% of present. Um, and particulate matter in concern because of human health also, it is very mm -hmm. hazardous. So CPCB 4 plus is going to be implemented from July, 1st July of 2000. 2023, which will be called as CPCB stage four. Okay, and uh, obviously the in terms of the emission norms, uh, most of the organization must be already working on. Uh, is it? Yeah, so, uh, you're correct. So everybody is working on. Uh, I mean, I mean it, because it got delayed, so the government was trying, and then COVID in, came in between, so it has got delayed. But like, all engine manufacturers are working for this. Um, implementation uh, preparation was going on since last two, three years so and of course all stakeholders agreed and that is why finally the notification came and cut off date for manufacturing is 30th june and for all generator is 31st december so 1st january 2024 onward it will be all cpcb stage 4 genset only will be sold in the market okay and uh, this particular uh, emission norm, uh, does it also stipulate any kind of uh, levels with respect to the sound generation also, or it doesn't talk about anything? So it, it is both actually. One is mass emission. So when we okay. talk about unburnt hydrocarbons, particulate matter, carbon monoxide. And second is a noise norm. So noise okay. norm is again a 75 decibel dB of a sound level is to be maintained at a distance of one meter from uh, a generator. So okay. uh, in terms of layman language, you can say when, when you're standing uh, in front of a diesel generator at a distance of one meter, two person can normally talk. So noise norms is already stringent if I talk about, uh, you know, compared to again, the rest of the world. So this is not going to be changed. This is going to remain same in CPCB4 stage four also, but all other, of course, is going to be changed in terms of mass emission. It is both okay. mass as well as noise norms. Okay. So that's very good. Uh, so uh, moving on, uh, let's uh, try and understand about your company, uh, Bladen, when it started, what's the brief about this uh, company? And uh, obviously the product is very, very innovative, uh, which I think I'm sure you're going to explain us a uh, mm -hmm. little later. But take us through the uh, company and, and when it started and how this product came about. Yeah, so this is a, a very interesting um, uh, when product came out and when I heard about this, I was quite uh, uh, you know, excited about this. So this is basically a British company and uh, started by two uh, Bladon brothers who were bike enthusiasts. And they actually designed world's first axial flow micro turbine uh, and they put it in a Jaguar rear extender bike later on in a concept car of Jaguar model CX-45. And that is where actually the investment of Tata also came into this company. And when they uh, uh, then put this engine in a generator application, uh, Tata actually has made further investment because they also found it very interesting and very useful for I mean, all developing and underdeveloped countries, which is actually a much better product uh, compared to any conventional product. But all along, this started around 2010 when they developed this and then put it in various applications. Only last year, uh, actually, they decided to transform from an engineering company to a product company. So they then set up a purpose built factory in Lamington Spa in West Midland, part of UK. So we are now I mean, ready, uh, already the volume production started. And uh, since last year, I mean, the distributor network is all in place in most of the major markets. And now 
are launching it in india also so the journey for now a mass production and a product company has started fantastic and so uh, just just uh, to add yeah. here uh, Uh, other than Tata's uh, investment corporation of Dubai is another investor who has invested in this company, which is which is a company of a crown prince there in Dubai. So there are two major investors: Tata's and uh, investment corporation of Dubai. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, these products are already uh, being sold in the uh, European market. So uh, already. Yeah. So it started. They started with Europe and then Middle East. Uh, South America and some APAC countries, and okay. now now in India and SAR countries is what we are planning. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, the broad difference uh, between the normal IC engine gensets and uh, the product which is there from Blader. This is actually a micro turbine engine which has a. Uh, compressor impeller is and turbine impeller in a shaft and the other end of the shaft has that generator unit and compared to a conventional internal combustion engine this is an external combustion engine so other than this turbine shaft there is an external combustor and uh, it, uh, the hot gases the heat of hot gases is also utilized when air compressed through that compressor impeller pass through that hot exhaust gas to preheat that air and then mixture of air and fuel burnt in combustor drives the turbine shaft which which generates mechanical power and then converted into electrical power uh, through that alternator so that is a difference where you have an internal combustion engine which has lot of moving parts piston rod connecting rod camshaft crankshaft whereas in this particular machine you only have one rotating part that is a turbine shaft and unlike internal combustion engine where the combustion actually takes intermittently whereas in external combustion uh, you have a continuous combustion so combustion efficiency actually gets improved to 99.99% so the kind of fuel uh, what we propose i mean the, it doesn't affect the power output fuel efficiency or emission irrespective of the fuel so that is why it is actually uh, has lot of advantages which we'll talk uh, and it places uh, much better in terms of fuel efficiency in terms of emission which is most important of course that is why this this product will actually will be of much greater or better use in terms of the, uh, the reducing carbon footprint also I, i i was actually about to ask that question so um, in terms of the emission norms so if we compare let's say a traditional genset uh, with uh, with the ic engine versus this Uh, for this comparable power generation what is the kind of reduction in terms of emission so if you use same diesel because of external combustion and improved combustion efficiency uh, if i talk about if comparing it with current cpcb2 norms the limit of carbon monoxide uh, is 3.5 whereas in this uh, in the case of micro turbine the carbon monoxide emits is 0.5 which is 1/7th of the current norms similarly unburnt hydrocarbons which is which has a limit of around 7.5 which actually this reduces almost around 50% lesser unburnt hydrocarbons and very important is particulate matter which is almost negligible or nil i mean if i have to put it in figures 0.3 is the current limit for diesel generator in CPCB2 norms, whereas micro turbine emits 0.0001 percent, so it is almost nil. So that is a kind of reduction in emission, mass emission, compared to a conventional diesel generator. Fantastic, uh, and of course, uh, for easy understanding, we will uh, we will uh, show the graphic of this working of the. 
micro turbine how it uh, operates uh, so that everybody can see that uh, and then understand the operation as well yeah actually so, so that is what i feel about when i interact with a uh, lot of people the first question came into their mind is how exactly it works because everybody knows internal combustion engine so it has a piston it has a cylinder and then crankshaft camshaft connecting rods and that is how the engine works but if it is external combustor so how it works so that uh, video will definitely help them to understand definitely introducing the blade and micro turbine genset Electricity is generated by our high-speed alternator and unique micro-turbine shaft. The engine compresses the air, which flows through the heat exchanger. Fuel is introduced to the air, to further increase the gas temperature. The hot gas drives the turbine at speeds of 135,000 rpm. The heat from the gas is recovered by the heat exchanger for fuel efficiency. The blade and micro turbine needs only one service per year and is fuel flexible, delivering quieter clean power. Blade and micro turbine genset, delivering quieter clean power today. Okay, moving on. Uh, so, uh, obviously, this product I believe is, is future ready. So, what are the different types of fuels which can be used in this product? So this is again a, a USP which uh, which actually uh, gives a uh, you know, lot of interest, lot is creating a lot of interest. Unlike diesel engine, which is designed for a fuel like diesel, this product, I mean, you can use diesel or kerosene or paraffin or hydro treated vegetable oil, or even a blend of these fuels in any proportion. It doesn't, the power output or fuel efficiency or emission doesn't get affected. So when I say flexible fuel, this has advantage if a customer has some other fuel available, kerosene or a paraffin, or uh, when I say hydro treated vegetable oil, actually it reduces almost 90% of the carbon footprint compared to for same power diesel is used. Or even if you have lesser quantity of hydro treated vegetable oil, it can be blend with diesel and can be used. So one is the advantage of flexible fuel. Uh, second is, when I say future fuel ready, sometimes later when you have a green hydrogen available or a biomethane, if I talk about biomethane, which is which reduces almost another 5%, that is 95% reduction of carbon footprints or green hydrogen, which reduces 100% carbon footprint. So when it's a net zero, what we call it a green fuel. So, this machine, when customer buy it, and later on green fuel is available, you are already there. You need not to go for another machine. Your CapEx investment is already done and you can use a greener fuel in the same machine. So the same machine which has flexible fuel option today has a future fuel ready option also. There are some more things which I want to talk about. As I said, it has only one moving part. So very important is this requires only a service once in a year, whereas diesel generator, I, I'm normally in this capacity, require a servicing of fuel filter, oil filter, and oil after every 400 or 500 hours. So if I have to run a machine in some off-grid site, 24 by 7 to 365 days, you run machine for more than 8,000 hours in a year, and you require 16 services, even if a, a Service is required up to 500. There are some machines which ask for 400 hours. Whereas in this machine, you don't need any service visit for one full year or for more than 8,670 hours. Only then a fuel filter and oil filter is required to be changed. More importantly, we don't have any lubricating oil in this machine or a coolant required. So it's a cleaner place and no replacement of oil is required. Only fuel filter and oil filter. So that's, that's another advantage. It's a reduced maintenance cost, reduced visits. So very, very important, useful for places where actually accessibility is also a problem. I mean, to sending a service engineer is a high cost. It's a hilly area, rough terrain area, or off-grid sites where, I mean, even taking a machine is, is a very difficult exercise. So one time it is done, you don't need to send service engineer frequently. So indirectly, it is reducing a lot of carbon footprints. 
to so operate it is itself. So carbon footprint and uh, important thing, uh, today if you are using even diesel, suppose if you have a diesel available, so you are reducing carbon footprint using that machine. And when you have a greener fuel available or suppose greener fuel intermittently is available and you want to switch it back to diesel because if it is a last mile location where you don't have any other fuel available and you want to use diesel. So not a problem. You can continue with diesel also as a fuel with a much reduced carbon footprint. Fantastic. And, and then there are a lot of, uh, lot of yeah. other advantages because yeah, sure, it's, sure. A, it's a variable speed engine. It uh, Even at a lower load, it, it optimizes the fuel efficiency. Whereas in a fixed RPM engine, a conventional diesel generator has a fixed RPM. So running under load actually doesn't give a fuel economy. Mm -hmm. And when I say blending is allowed, so even if some part of kerosene is mixed in a diesel and you are running it with that fuel, it is a deterrent to all people who are involved in fuel theft because it is of no use for them. It doesn't make any attractive proposition for them. So in, I mean, officially in the beginning itself, if you mix a little amount of kerosene, so the, it addresses that issue also. It is easily integrable with renewables also where site we have solar or wind and you want to combine it with a micro turbine generator so it can be integrated. So these are advantages where fuel theft, fuel flexibility, future fuel ready, less maintenance, reduced maintenance cost gives a lot of advantage. Fantastic. I think the, the, this is definitely going to disrupt uh, the genset uh, market uh, soon, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, talking about the next one, so uh, uh, right now I think uh, you are ready with some of the product segments uh, uh, with some sim some capacity so which are the segments you are basically targeting and how and why so uh, i mean uh, basically we actually are uh, I mean, we cannot say just it is just a replacement of diesel generator but definitely all those sites where uh, which is off grid or a bad grid site where accessibility is a challenge where fuel availability is a problem all those segments areas are our uh, of area of interest and we are targeting those. I mean, if I take an example, like of course, telecom site is already we discussed uh, a lot of sites like this where you have such issues. This machine can address that problems. So uh, in terms of the price point, I, I know uh, probably uh, you may not be ready in terms of talking about the price right now, but then uh, how do you really uh, pitch your product uh, to prospective uh, buyers? Um, uh, what would, what uh, what are the different USPs? Uh, of course, you did mention a lot about the product. So obviously, uh, this is a product which is future ready, which is less carbon emission, uh, which is flexible in terms of fuel. Uh, I think all that you listed already, uh, but still, how do you really pitch this product to your prospective buyers? Yeah, so uh, uh, when, when a yeah. customer has, you know, so many advantages, um, the product with such a technology, of course, comes at a cost. So if uh, it will not be a justice to this product, if we just compare a capital cost, um, which will definitely be uh, higher compared to a conventional generator. But very important is the overall value it gives to the customer. There are some which can be monetized. There are some which cannot be monetized, but overall in terms of value. So when I compare a total cost of ownership, it will definitely uh, gives clearly a much higher value compared to a conventional diesel generator. So that is what we will be banking on. Uh, it is actually a total cost of ownership, which will be of, of importance. This machine actually is designed for a life of almost 45,000 hours compared to any conventional diesel generator, which has a life of almost one third of, of this kind of life. 
so you have a reduced maintenance cost and you have an option of any greener fuel available in future where you will not be requiring any new or a fresh capital cost so when i work out a total overall uh, or, or or total cost of ownership the customer will definitely find a value fantastic and also i think going forward uh, i think more and more organizations are uh, very concerned about their esg rating uh, though i think in india it is very early days I, esg rating as such is a very early concept right now but uh, with the with the uh, conscious effort uh, in terms of uh, across the world trying to reduce the emission and 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 reduce the temperature rise uh concept of esg rating will come and lot of organizations will try to do things which are in line with their esg rating and and the, and and i think that would actually suit your product offering very well uh, though at a slightly higher cost as you mentioned um yeah yeah I mean, every, everybody i mean god you talk of any company everybody has now talking about esg they they have a target of reducing carbon footprints Uh, one of the biggest group of india actually has a target of making net zero by 2030 the entire group so there are a lot of companies uh, even one of the leading mno um, uh, uh, worldwide actually has um, put a very interesting logo outside their headquarter good g double o t so get out of diesel i mean mm-hmm. they made an internal target how uh, start reducing fossil fuel and more start you know focusing on a greener fuel so that you start reducing carbon footprint so the oh, everybody is talking about this and they are finding ways and means initially will have some cost but later on uh, they, i mean they will have that uh, uh, target of um, reducing a carbon footprint in india also i mean um, we, we um, 2000 by 2030 they want to uh, have at least 50% of our total installed capacity should be from renewable sources and we are actually india is one of the country which has already uh, or exceeded what they have committed in paris uh, agreement um, the solar alone has i think reached almost 140 gigawatt capacity and by 2030 with, with the continuous growing demand they will uh, overall renewable energy sources will be developing almost 500 gigawatt so everywhere the focus is on esg reducing carbon footprints how fossil fuel can be uh, you know replaced with something better and should have should have machines to deliver that yeah i i completely agree i think uh... ESG is the way forward, I think, uh, and uh, this this product offering is uh, absolutely in that line to address the challenges uh, for organizations and for the society in, at large. I would think, and uh, and I do I do see that a uh, lot of uh, um, uh, health organization, I mean, hospitals and things like that, where it is actually. Uh, much better to have a product which is environmentally more friendly compared to the uh, the the regular ones though i i do understand that probably you are not probably ready with all the uh, power nodes as yet for the indian market but i'm i'm sure uh, going forward uh, you will actually come into india with larger um uh, nodes which are available across the power range uh for the indian market as well so what is the take on the on the plan for india so it is just a beginning of an and a uh, company also sees india as a big market a potential market so starting with some identified segments and later on of course expanding our range and uh, once i mean we see a clear cut visibility we we'll have a plan of having a setup in india also for manufacturing so that is something which will follow i mean because india being one of the biggest market uh, and there are a lot of things happening in india in terms of um, 
greener field also the, the company like reliance adani acme indian oil are investing heavily on green hydrogen that is of course a future and you have a machine to deliver will have a good proposition when we start making in india so that is something which will follow definitely and you earlier mentioned about tata group investing into this product so uh, uh, do you see in future uh, tata playing a more active role in the uh, at, le- at least in the indian operations at a later point of time uh, though it is uh, it is just a speculation right now what i am talking but do you see that happening going forward so as of now i mean they, they are actually one of the initial investors how it takes shape i mean it is too early to say mm-hmm. but, but they found it very interesting and keeping indian market also uh, uh, they actually have invested initially when it was uh, a partnership with jaguar land land rover and then when they found genset of course because still we have despite a very good uh, i mean electrification the, the rural areas are still uh, having an issue of electricity to um, availability of good uh, quality electricity so that is why they found it very interesting uh, to have this product um, in indian market so i don't know right now but that they, they will also play an important might be they play an important role here they also great great uh, sanjay ji thank you i think uh, uh, this topic was very interesting and i'm sure uh, bladen uh, will do fantastically well uh, in the coming days and in future in the indian market and of course across the globe uh, this such a important technological uh, advancement uh, with respect to uh, one of the existing problems in the in the world so um, thank you for taking your time out and talking to us on on the product and and explaining about all the intricacies about this industry and uh, i'm sure uh, a, a lot of uh, orders will keep flowing now in your uh, kitties very soon thank you so much thank you thank you thank you very much for inviting again thank you dr mishra thank you